All right, how you doing? Just thought I would take care of a little drive time by sharing a little something about uh, what went on on the court today that was positive. And, you know, I don't know how many people do this, but um, it's basically the one ball drill and, and using a single tennis ball or very few balls to teach a lesson. Um, and that's not the norm. You know, what do we do? We use, uh, you know, 200, 250, 375 balls. And we're giving players permission to miss 374 times. And, you know, we might throw in a little feedback in there. But pretty shortly another ball's coming. The player makes a mistake. And... Um, they get a little short feedback and then they're hitting more balls pretty much immediately. And this satisfies the desires of those people who come to you and they just say, I just want to hit a bunch of balls, right? Um, and it's not necessarily the best thing. So um, that's our introduction. So one tennis ball. Now, I first heard about this from Torben Ulrich and... Jeff Borowiak and others uh, would have these famous one ball tennis practices and um, you know I heard of, heard about this at USPTA events my good friend Maurice Newman uh, is somebody who actually participated in this with them and he said you know it was some of the worst pressure I've ever felt because here Jeff and Torben would keep these really long rallies going and then I would mess it up and then we only had one ball so you had to go pick it up and when it was repeatedly you the same person picking that ball up then you know you felt like you were responsible for not getting it done right anyway so you know I interviewed Torben and if you listen to the interview that I gave uh, that I had with him we get into, you know, what's important, why, why one tennis ball, and essentially, uh, he says it has to do with the economy of it, that when you have one tennis ball, and then that tennis ball is gone, then you have no tennis balls, and so that means you have to take greater care of it and isn't that really actually more tennis specific training because when you play a tennis match there's only one ball in play and you have to take care of it so um, the reason that I did this is because uh, I had this basket of orange balls that keep, that stays in my bin and then all of a sudden it's just gone. So I only had three orange balls to work with my little kids. And then uh, I had switched out tennis balls. I took dead tennis balls from the ball machine, took them into an elementary school, took the balls I'm training my high school team with, put them in the ball machine got the brand new balls, took them to the high school, and I forgot to replenish my balls at the club. So I had just a handful of good yellow tennis balls. So I was like, all right, life just, I just gave myself lemons, so I think what I need to do is make lemonade here. So, you know, I, I, I go to my lesson and I say, hey, you know, we're going to do things a little bit differently. You know, there's a little mishap with the balls, but we're going to make the most of it. So we're going to play with one ball. What do you think about that? And to, to my surprise, the kids all thought it was the greatest idea ever. I was shocked because I've, you know, I've worked with kids who don't think that's great. And you'll get funny looks from the parents because there's sort of this expectation that you're going to have a hopper full of balls. You know, you're going to have minimum 75 balls. And, you know, you could have your monster cart. Uh, but I had one. So, you know, I introduced it. I was like, hey, you know, if we have one and we, 
if somebody the, the rally stops, then we have none. So no more rallying until somebody picks that up. But the other thing that happens is you get think time. You get think time. So, you know, if somebody messes up, then we can stop and we can say, hey, why did you miss that shot? And they actually get a lot more lesson out of the stoppage and the rebuilding the real awareness of what created that error than they would get by hitting 15 more shots or 20 in the same period of time. So, uh, so at the end of lessons, you know, and, and generally, okay, my, my, my unofficial data, I mean, I, I would estimate that players then begin rallying 25 to 50 percent better because their focus is more on taking care of the ball. And the most common answer among the five different kids that I worked with this morning was that the reason why they missed was because they weren't concentrating. And this is not something that normally comes up. So, so, I, so then I asked the question, all right, when is the best time to start concentrating? You know, and then, you know, just like you would expect from kids, they would say, oh, I, I try to, I try to concentrate on it as it comes over the net. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting. I'm like, huh, do you think maybe it would be better to concentrate earlier? And they go, oh, uh, maybe I should concentrate when you're hitting it. I'm like, uh, huh, interesting. Do you think maybe you should concentrate before that? And, you know, I talk about relaxed concentration versus focus. And that's another discussion. I don't want to get into that one right now. But uh, but we talk about relaxed concentration. So... So then we... Now, see, I'm doing such a great job paying attention to the road. I'm missing a big jam up over there, and I'm going the other way. So in case you were worried about me and my safe driving, trust me, I'm all over it. I got it dialed in. Anyway, so... So, basic, so then I was like, all right, well, try this. Try concentrating before I hit my shot. Right. So you need to, your attention, your concentration needs to go back to the player prior to the time that they take their forward hit. Because you want, you want to see the racket going towards the ball and you also want to see impact. So dramatic improvement from kids today. I mean, uh, some kids that would, you know, make an error every third shot, you know, were making a lot more consecutive shots in, you know, I would say minimum, the worst, the least improved player today improved by 30% um, in their ability to rally. And, and the best player, easily 50%. So I would call it very successful and and so the kids reported back at the end and i asked them what did they see and and the one one boy said i like the fact that we didn't have to stop and pick up a bunch of balls and i thought that was interesting because he his perception of ball picking up was that we spent less time picking up balls but it i it had to be 3 to 5 times longer because as soon as one rally goes, then you have to go all the way to the fence or to the net to go pick up an errant ball. So the demand of stopping, you know, and, you know, averaging out the time you got the mower and you're picking up all, you know, pick up 275 balls, you know, in a short period of time in under two minutes, you know. So it's an interesting thing, the battle between perception and reality. But for him, he liked that. He also liked, and this is a nine-year-old, no, I'm sorry, this is a seven-year-old talking. A seven-year-old said, 
I liked that I had more think time. And uh, actually, seven-year-old girl today improved a tremendous amount based on the same thing. She didn't... She said, I had more time to recover between shots, right? Because, you know, if she's do, if we're doing a, a line drill and she's running across hitting two forehands and then going back in line, I mean, I keep my line drills moving, so... Um, don't get on me about line drills because I want a lot of high volume hitting, but she found a lot more value in having time to recover, you know, and then the other girls, uh, they really found value in the idea of taking care of the ball. And when you think about any ball sport, that is one of the key fundamentals of any ball sport is ball possession, taking care of the ball, keeping it in your possession, not letting it get out of your possession, you know, and, and the way we receive the tennis ball has a lot more to do with whether we're going to, um, you know, play error free than how we send it. So anyway, I hope that you found this helpful. I would say the top take homes are, um, one, uh, open yourself up to the one ball experience Two, trust the kids to respond well, or, you know, even adult students, I think find this very valuable. Three, don't be afraid of the weird looks or the, you know, the expectations of what people think constitutes an amazing lesson or not. Um, three, Four, well, I don't know what we're on. Four, uh, ask the questions. Hey, why did you miss that shot? I mean, I probably asked that question 50 times today. And generally, kids got it right. And when they didn't, then I let them think about, about it a little bit more. You know? And so, you know, I had this one kid and he was like, oh, it was because I didn't have enough power on the shot. I'm like, well, really show me where on your racket you hit the ball. And, you know, it was a framer inside the, you know, very close to the throat. And I was like, well, so no, really the issue was the spacing, right? You needed better spacing so you could get the ball towards the middle of your strings. So, um, you know, giving play. And then finally, any anything that you do to give people a different kind of experience with the ball is going to help their overall understanding of how to play tennis. And one ball is the only ball that is ever really in play. So it's actually maybe the most sport specific thing that you can do. So I will end there. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'm going to put a little uh, link to my Patreon in there. So if you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out, you know, a pledge of $1 a month would be greatly appreciated. And, um, you know, there are different levels on there as well. And I'll be, I'll actually be putting some content uh, on my Patreon that will be uh, private and people, only the Patreon users will be able to get into there. Anyway, thank you. And, uh, Go out there and teach some great tennis. I know you are.